So far, everything that we've been learning in this class has been all about motion that is continuing on in a straight line. Maybe it's turning a little bit, but it's generally in a straight line slowing down, speeding up, not something that repeats itself. Now we're going to launch into a section where we're dealing with motion that repeats itself. Specifically, we're launching into periodic motion, which is motion that repeats itself in an equal interval of time. That means uh, if, if it takes one second for something to happen, it's going to do that exact same thing each second. For example here, notice this is a periodic motion. The ball is going round and round and round. Notice the motion is repeating itself going around the circle. So if I want to declare, I don't know, let's, let's declare uh, over here to be the start line. Um, it's going to start and then it's going to take the exact same amount of time to go around the circle once and to complete it as it does it over and over and over again. That's periodic motion. Motion that repeats itself, and it takes the exact same amount of time to do it each, each, each time. Now, uh, a few definitions that we need to know before we launch into this idea. Period. Period is how long, that screams at you how long, time, that's one of our key terms there, uh, how long it takes for an object to complete one cycle. So how long time it takes for this little red dot to go all the way around my circle, this ball to go all the way around its orbit, or this planet, if there's maybe a sun or something else in the middle, to go all the way around uh, the, the star or whatever's in the middle. Frequency is the number of cycles an object completes per second. By the way, you could substitute for cycles, you could substitute revolutions, right, number of times it goes around the circle. Uh, so the number of cycles an object, an object completes per second. How many times around the circle does it go before one second, or when one second passes inside of one second? As you can see here, this takes a little bit longer than, than a second. So I, you know, just off the top of my head, I'd say the frequency is probably going to be somewhere around, oh, I don't know, 0.4 uh, hertz there. The number of times it only makes it 0.4 around the circle, let's say, in one second. It doesn't make it all the way around. That'd be one uh, one hertz, because the units here are hertz. And I should come back up to period. Units for period, the second, because how long? Time, seconds. Uh, now, frequency, it's the number of cycles uh, per second. One over per second here. Um, number of cycles per second. Per second. Another way of writing that is seconds to the negative one, and we call that the hert. Uh, HZ, hertz. Um, now, the relationship between these two should be somewhat obvious to you. Notice this is how long time it takes for one cycle. This is number of cycles per one second. So both of them involve time and a cycle or multiple cycles. It's just they're reversed of each other. That's what leads us to this, this equation here. Period is the same thing as 1 divided by the frequency, or the inverse of the frequency. And 1 over the period is the frequency. So you can obviously work that around. That means the period and the frequency are inverses of each other. Something to remember there, something to write down. Of course, you also want your units. Now, before we jump down to angular frequency, I'd like to just point out a few things that, you, that uh, experience periodic motion. Uh, three common ones. A pendulum. A pendulum swings one way and then swings back, comes back down, and passes through what's called the equilibrium position. The equilibrium position is the position that an object would be at rest, or the spot it would like to be at equilibrium position. Uh, for a pendulum would be right in the center. Uh, so a pendulum, though, it takes an equal amount of time for it to complete one rotation. It swings all the way to the other side and then swings back. Or maybe a mass on a spring. So if I have a spring here and then I put some mass on it and I lift the mass up a little bit and then drop it, it's going to fall down through the equilibrium position and the spring is going to stretch and stretch and stretch till, vi till finally the spring force is able to overcome gravity and start to pull the thing back up. And so then it pulls back up through the equilibrium position. That's the position that the object would be if you just let it sit there. If you never picked it up, it would have been at that equilibrium position and then it comes all the way back up to the top, and then it would oscillate back down, coming back down, right, to the bottom, and then bouncing back up. So it would bounce down and up, down and up, an equal amount of time for it to make it from the top all the way down and then back up. This rotation right there would be periodic, and the amount of time it takes to do that would be the same over and over again. Now, to actually talk about angular frequency, I purposefully drew an xy axis. Here's my y, there's my x axis on this circle, and I changed the way uh, the object was rotating, uh, making it rotate counterclockwise, because that's the direction our angles traditionally go around a circle. Now, angular frequency is the number of 
radians. Now, a radian is a different way of measuring angles. Now, if, if you're in ninth grade right now, you're used to only hearing about degrees, 90 degrees, you know, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, 360, all degrees. Just another way of measuring angles is in terms of radians, uh, pi over 2 radians, pi radians, 3 pi over 2 radians, and 2 pi radians. So 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. It's all the way around in the circle. So angular frequency, the number of angle, the number of radians an object goes per second. In other words, if you start the time right here, whenever the object's right here, how, many, how much of an angle does it, whoop, let's say it stops there, how much of an angle does it, is it able to eat up or clip off within one second? Does it make it all the way around to the 270 degree mark? But in radians, what we're dealing with, 3 pi over 2 mark. Or does it only make it all the way around to the 90 degree mark? Only able to eat up 90 degrees, aka pi over two radians. So it's the number of radians an object is able to go through. How many degrees, how many, how many radians, angle, is it able to go in one second? And the equation to calculate that, omega, this is the Greek letter omega, it kind of looks like a W, two pi times the frequency, which you can get from there. A couple of quick, simple example problems. The first one, what is the frequency and angular frequency of a tire? So maybe we have a car tire here that's rotating. It makes one rotation every 12 point, uh, excuse me, 0 0.12 seconds. Now, note the unit and what it's saying. It's going to make one rotation in this amount of time. Well, that's the definition of period. So we are given the period 0 0.12 seconds. And frequency is just 1 over the period. So all I have to do is plug in frequency 1 over 0.12. Come up with a frequency of 8.3 and technically 8.333 repeating uh, hertz, but two significant figures lim limits me to 8.3 hertz. Now looking for the angular frequency. Angular frequency is 2 pi times the frequency. Now I could also point out this 2 pi, by the way, that's the number of radians, aka the angle, right? Same as 360 degrees. The number of radians in a circle. There's 2 pi radians in a circle. So 2 pi times the frequency. And I come out with 52 radians per second. Now, I do want to say this. Don't get so freaked out right now in ninth grade about this whole radian idea. Need to, need to really understand that. You're going to get that a lot in math in the upcoming years with unit circle, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so right now, if this idea of angular frequency is really freaking you out, just simply say whatever this angular frequency idea, uh, idea is, it is 2 pi times the frequency. Just take the equation and run with it. The next problem is slightly similar, but it involves concepts, but is a little bit different. I have uh, the exact same tire, and I'm wanting to know how fast is it turning. What's the tire's velocity? And that, by the way, is the tangential velocity. More on that later, a.k.a. how fast is this edge of the tire going? It's really its speed. Um, if the tire has a radius of 0.45 meters, now the tire isn't speeding up or slowing down. We're assuming that it's going at the exact same velocity the entire way, so I can use the velo constant velocity equation. So velocity equals displacement divided by time, and I just, need to, I just need to figure out how far does the edge of the tire go. Maybe it's this edge right here. It's going to go all the way around. And then I need to divide it by how long it takes. So the distance it travels whenever it goes all the way around is the circumference of the tire. And the equation for circumference of a circle, assuming this tire is a circle, hopefully, is 2 pi r. Remember that equation for circumference of the circle, 2 pi r. Uh, not pi r squared. Pi r squared is for the area of a circle, 2 pi r for circumference. And the time it takes to go all the way around for that point on the tire to rotate all the way around, that's called the period, right? The time it takes to go all the way around. So 2 pi r divided by the period. And I come out with a velocity of around 24 meters per second whenever I substitute in my numbers right for radius, which was given in this problem, and the period, how long it took, this is the exact same tires from up here, the period, how long it takes uh, that tire to go around, 24 meters per second is how quickly the one dot is going around, which by the way would be the velocity of the car. Next, I want to introduce a specific type of periodic motion, specifically simple harmonic motion. That is motion, that is a periodic motion where the restoring force is always trying to point back towards equilibrium, and it is directly proportional to how far away from equilibrium you are, aka the further away you get, the harder it's trying to pull back. So uh, let's use this pendulum as an example right here. I'm going to kind of blow it up for us. Um, here, the further away I get, let's say right here, by the way, would be equilibrium right here at B at the very bottom. That's where the pendulum wants to be at rest. And the further away you pull it, all the way up at C, notice the displacement S 
a long ways to the right. Um, the further away you pull it, the harder the force is trying to pull it back. Well, let's draw an arrow for my force. Trying to pull it back to equilibrium. And if I pull it even further away, if I make S come even further out, then my restoring force is going to come back even harder, the force that's trying to pull it back. Now, the defining equation for simple harmonic motion is the acceleration that a pendulum, that a, something on a, a mass, on a spring, or anything else that experiences uh, simple harmonic motion, acceleration that it feels is equal to the negative angular frequency squared, this is just a constant out in front, times how far away from equilibrium you pull it or it is at that moment. Now, I want to point out this negative sign. This negative sign is very, very critical. What that says is, if I'm, I'm going to call everything this way positive and everything this way negative, and here's going to be my zero mark right here. If I have a positive displacement coming out this way, then a positive number in for this delta x, right, times negative omega, I'm going to come out with a negative acceleration, aka an acceleration that is pointing back to the left. And vice versa. If I have a negative displacement over here to point A, negative S, and so now I plug in negative some number here for my delta X, the displacement, negative times a negative is going to give me a positive acceleration. Well, positive is pointing towards the right, so my acceleration would point towards the right in this case. What this means is with periodic motion, because of this negative sign, the acceleration vector is always trying to bring, or the force here, the acceleration, is always trying to bring the object back to equilibrium. Now it coasts past equilibrium because it built up speed, so like from A, it builds up speed and then coasts past and the acceleration changes and tries to pull it back down. Check out what the acceleration would be at the equilibrium mark. Delta x, how far away from equilibrium you are now, is zero. You're at equilibrium. Zero times anything is zero. So at the equilibrium mark, you have zero acceleration. Acceleration would be at the maximum whenever you're the furthest away. That's called the amplitude, when you're the furthest away you can possibly be. Now, don't worry too much. We're going to expand greatly upon that idea in class and, and try to really dig into this, this thought of simple harmonic motion. Now, uh, let's work a quick example problem. What acceleration does a pendulum experience uh, if it's pulled 2.5 meters away from its equilibrium position, or maybe it's coasting and that's just where it's at at that point, and I should say positive 0.25 meters away from the equilibrium position, uh, if it takes 1.25 seconds for it to complete one revolution? So there's the defining equation for this, uh, for simple harmonic motion. And uh, the problem here is I don't know what the angular frequency is. I do know delta x. It's positive 0.25 away. I need to figure out what the angular frequency is to actually be able to calculate the acceleration. Now, gratefully, I was told the period. The period is 1.25 seconds. That's how long it takes for the pendulum to coast all the way to one side and then back. And from the period, I can get to the angular frequency. So remember, 1 over the period is the frequency, and then angular frequency is 2 pi times whatever that f turns out to be, whatever that frequency is. So then, uh, now that I've calculated my frequency, I can plug that in from the period, by the way. I took the period and substituted that in. Oh, I made a math error here. This should be 1.25, leaving me at point. Uh, 0 0.8 hertz, not, not 4 because of that little uh, mistake writing things down. But now, now that I have the frequency, I can substitute into the angular frequency equation and actually calcula calculate what the angular frequency is going to be, which is needed up here to calculate the acceleration. Now I do want to point out that I didn't round down here because the angular frequency isn't the final answer. I'm looking for the acceleration. I just had to take this period and calculate the angular frequency from it so that I could calculate the acceleration. Of note also, if you didn't want to go through all these steps, you just could have realized that, hey, the frequency is the same thing as the inverse of the period. That means that if you substitute in 1 over t here, you'll come out with 2 pi, angular frequency is 2 pi divided by the period. And that would have made it one step shorter. Also worth pointing out is this negative sign is not inside of the parentheses. The square goes to the omega first, this negative sign is out front. And whenever I plug that all back into my calculator, I come out with negative 6.3 meters per, sec uh, per second squared. Two significant figures specifically because of my displacement only having two. My period had three, but you have to take the least number there, two significant figures for how far away it was. So negative 6.3 meters per second squared. 
All right, that's the basics of periodic motion and simple harmonic motion. Now we're going to continue to expand upon this thoroughly in class.